And this is VOA1, The Hits. Hello, and welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ana Mateo. This program is for English learners, so we speak a bit slower. And our stories are written especially for people learning English. In 1988, the percentage of U.S. adults aged 25 or older with a college degree reached 20% for the first time. That information comes from the National Center for Education Statistics. Many people consider a degree from a four-year college to be an important step toward a good job. Employers have used the credential to help choose between job candidates. Experts who study labor and higher education have said a college degree tells businesses that their employees have basic work skills. But by 2019, the number of adults with college degrees increased to 36%. That is a rise of 80% over 30 years. A 2019 story in the Wall Street Journal newspaper called this increase degree inflation. That meant the credential had become less valuable because it was so common. However, many businesses still use a college degree as a filter in choosing possible workers. While more American workers have a college degree than in the 1980s, there are still millions of experienced workers who do not have one. People who study labor say dependence on a college degree creates a needless barrier. Byron Ogeest is one of them. Ogeest is an economist and a labor expert. He was an advisor to former President Barack Obama. In 2015, he helped start a company called Opportunity at Work. It aims to help skilled workers in the U.S. who do not have college degrees find good jobs. Ogeest tells the story of his father, who took computer classes. His father then went on to have a successful computer programming career, but he did not have a college degree. Ogeest calls workers like his father stars. It stands for Skilled Through Alternative Routes. That means they use different paths to get the skills and knowledge they need to do a job. His company's research shows the three main groups of stars are African Americans, Hispanics, and rural people. Ogeest recently wrote an opinion piece for the Washington Post newspaper. He later spoke about his work in a podcast. He said the college degree filter creates a skills gap. The lack of a degree makes employers think there are not enough workers to do some jobs. But in fact, there are workers with the needed skills. Most of the skills we use at work, we learn on the job, not in school. So if we stop people from having that experience on the job, well, then obviously we're going to work our way into a skills gap. And I think that's exactly what we've done. Some jobs clearly require special degrees and training, such as the professions of medicine or law. However, there are millions of good workers in the U.S. who have valuable experience, said Christian Serrera. He works with Ogeest at Opportunity at Work. Serrera said they may have jobs at large stores like Walmart and could move into better jobs with a little special training. 
Sirera said, many of these people speak English and another language. He gave an example of someone who needs to work with people who can speak both English and Spanish. He said, an immigrant has skills people cannot learn in college. Like patience and not taking things too personally and having a little bit of humor about life in general uh, as you're learning about a different culture, a different country, a different everything. A company, he said, that is flexible in its hiring methods can identify a good worker and then train them for a better job. Ogeest recently spoke with the New York Times newspaper. He said people need dependable jobs to enter the middle class. If companies continue four-year degree requirements, millions of people will not be able to get better jobs. Sirera moved to the U.S. from Spain without a college degree. He found that if he wanted to have a good job, he would need to find a way to finish college. He did that, but it was not easy. He started by attending a community college. Many people will still need to push themselves to get a college degree, he said. However, companies like Opportunity at Work are asking businesses to reconsider their job requirements. A recent story by the Harvard Business Review noted that during the COVID-19 health crisis, some companies removed a college degree from their list of job requirements. Before that, a 2018 story by CNBC noted that companies including Google, Apple, IBM, and Starbucks were removing college degree requirements from some job listings. Serrera said many of those jobs are show-your-work jobs, like writing programming for computers. But he said there are still other jobs where people who have work experience without a degree can succeed. Also, he said, companies need to tell their employees about opportunities for them to get better jobs and to make it easier for good workers to be considered for them. Serrera called on employers to offer jobs with mid-level pay and good job possibilities to STARS. He said that STARS answer when employers send a strong signal that they need workers with skills and do not require a college degree. But as of right now, employers are failing to turn the signal on and commit to action. That, he added, prevents STARS from taking action and keeps them on the sidelines. I'm Dan Friedel. Thanks, Dan. And now, words and their stories from BOA Learning English. The words we say are weightless sounds in the air, but they are powerful. What we say can greatly affect people, situations, just about everything. That is why sometimes it is a good idea to walk away from a heated argument. If we feel angry, we might say something we regret. Perhaps anger is not the problem. Maybe your thoughts on a situation or issue are not fully formed, but you speak anyway. Or maybe you simply have a secret, one that you are dying to share. Whatever the reason, sometimes we speak when maybe we shouldn't. And once those words are out there, there is no taking them back. The damage is done. Or we could say, the genie is out of the bottle. Let's take apart this saying. 
A genie is a trouble-causing spirit with magical powers from Middle Eastern folktales. Some experts say this expression may be connected to the centuries-old stories of Aladdin. He is a young man who releases a genie trapped in a small container. That's the bottle. Once out, the genie is powerful and tricky. The result? A lot of trouble. So if you let the genie out of the bottle, undesirable results or consequences will follow. To let the cat out of the bag has a similar meaning. The cat is in the bag for a reason. When you let it out, there will be consequences. And both the genie and the cat, as well as the words we say, cannot be recaptured. But how do we use these expressions? Here is one example. The politician says she misspoke about her plans to run for president. But the press had already reported on it. The genie was out of the bottle and could not be put back in. Here is another example. Two co-workers use both expressions. Tony really let the cat out of the bag at work today. He told everyone that Mary found another job and was leaving the company next month. What? But she hasn't told management yet. I know. So they fired her. That's awful. That means she'll lose a whole month's pay. He apologized, but there's no putting that genie back in the bottle. I bet Mary would like to put Tony in a bottle. Ha! <laughs> a genie is far more dangerous than a cat and harder to catch. So the two sayings are not always interchangeable. Here is an example. Some experts say social media is damaging users, especially children. But the technology and its appeal is here to stay. No one can put that genie back in the bottle. In that example, you would not use let the cat out of the bag. Instead, use it when someone has said something that was supposed to remain a secret. You can't take words back, and you can't rehide a secret. Something has been done and can't be undone. And that's the end of this Words and Their Stories. Thanks for listening. Until next time, I'm Ana Mateo. Next, let's hear from Dan Novak. Adio and Lachi hope to get married one day in Cuba. The two men want to dress in black for a ceremony by the seashore. But the idea of same-sex marriage troubles religious leaders and their followers. Recently, the socialist government in Cuba published a new proposal for a family law and asked for public comment ahead of a vote. The debate has since turned into a very public clash over same-sex marriage policy. 31-year-old Adiel Gonzalez is a student of religion. His 51-year-old partner, Lachi Gonzalez, is an accountant. They both work at the Evangelical Theological Seminary in Matanzas. Adiel said putting his right to marriage to a public vote is painful. He said it gives the majority of people who are heterosexual the power to decide over the minority of homosexuals. Lachi added, God has no stepchildren 
so we are all daughters and sons of God, and what Adiel and I do is have a life with love. The proposed family law will be considered by Parliament after the still unscheduled vote. The bill has more than 480 articles. It expands grandparents' rights and permits financial agreements before marriage. The bill sets punishments for committing violence in a marriage. And parents can decide whether a child takes the family's name of the mother or the father. However, the biggest issue is over changing the definition of marriage. Current law defines marriage as between a man and a woman. The new bill would change it to between two people. The proposal would also permit homosexuals to adopt children and use surrogate pregnancies without payment. Reverend Moises de Prada is a top clergy with the Assemblies of God. The group has grown quickly in Cuba and now has more than 2,000 churches and 1 million members. He said the family structure in the word of God, is that which is agreed between a man and a woman and the resulting children. Cuba is officially non-religious after the 1959 revolution led by Fidel Castro. But religious groups, including Catholics, Muslims, Protestants, and Afro-Cuban religions, have become more influential over the past 25 years. Some campaigned in 2018 and 2019 against an earlier vote which would have rewritten the Constitution to permit same-sex marriage. Opposition from social conservatives was strong enough that the government at that time backed away. However, lawmaker Mariela Castro supported the change. She is the daughter of then-president Raul Castro and director of Cuba's Center for Sexual Education. Justice Minister Oscar Silveira Martinez told the Associated Press that the new proposal does not construct social realities. It tries to foresee legal solutions protect those social realities that exist. Assemblies of God leader Julio Cesar Sanchez said such same-sex unions would be the result of sin. He added, because murder also exists, that doesn't mean it's good. Cuban citizens also have differing opinions. Carola Reina is a 25-year-old housewife. She said she was not against same-sex couples being happy, but it seems to me that adopting children, they shouldn't get involved in that, she said. Nearby was 68-year-old Alberto Dausa. He told the AP, There are people who are going to be against same-sex couples joining in matrimony but I think that's something normal. I'm Dan Novak. Thanks, Dan. These days, there are computer programs to help people do just about anything, from studying a language to looking for a job. There are even apps for praying. The Vatican recently released its latest version of the prayer app Click to Pray. Roman Catholic Church leaders said they hope Click to Pray 2.0 will give people an improved praying experience in a fast online world. Earlier this month, seven Catholic officials held a news conference to demonstrate Click to Pray 2.0. It is the first major update of the app since the launch of Click to Pray in 2016. 
At the conference, the officials presented to reporters a video showing the app's new functions. One is a personal prayer planner. It lets users plan their prayer time for each day. And then a reminder function tells them to stop, take a break from the rest of the world, and pray. Praying is not a waste of time as we sometimes think, said Father Frederick Fornos. He recently spoke with Reuters news agency about the app. He also shared his ideas on the importance of prayer. Prayer, he said, is like the seed in the darkness of the earth, which will show its fruit in its own good time. The prayer app is available in six Western languages and Chinese. It gives users issues to pray about. This lets users pray together with Pope Francis, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church. For example, users could pray for peace in one part of the world using the app. The app also offers a school of prayer. It gives support to those people who are finding it hard to get started. The school of prayer can also help people form prayer groups around the world. An Italian priest in Saint Peter's Square in Vatican City praised the new app. Father Cosimo Scena said the app is especially good for people who have strayed. These are people who have left the church for some time, and may find it difficult to return. It is an extraordinary thing, the cleric told Reuters, because it allows you to reach people that you don't physically meet. It becomes a bridge to reach those hearts that sometimes have strayed from God. Officials said they know that the app might not be right for everyone. It is also important to note, they said, that this app is not a substitute for traditional prayer. The secretary of the Vatican's communications department is Monsignor Lucio Ruiz. He said it is not meant to invalidate the other places or ways to pray. It is one more way to reach people who want or need a new way. I'm Ana Mateo. Finally, we finish our show today with Brian Lynn. Thousands of American workers face possible job losses as requirements to be vaccinated against COVID-19 begin to be enforced. The vaccine requirements, known as mandates, from governments and companies have faced opposition across the country, but they have also been effective at persuading many workers to get vaccinated. COVID-19 has killed more than 700,000 people in the United States. U.S. officials say about 77 percent of individuals who are eligible for a vaccine have received at least one shot. Thousands of police officers and firefighters in cities like Chicago and Baltimore are at risk of losing their jobs soon. They are facing rules that require them. To report whether they are vaccinated. In Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot has been battling with the city's police labor union. It does not support the vaccine mandate for city workers. About one third of the city's twelve thousand seven hundred seventy police employees. Failed to report their vaccination status last week 
as required. Some officers have had their pay cut off. Lightfoot has said the mandate is aimed at saving lives and creating a safe workplace. She accused the union of trying to start an insurrection by opposing the rule. The administration of President Joe Biden has been behind the push to get more Americans vaccinated. Last week, about 200 Boeing Company employees and others held a protest. They opposed the airplane maker's requirement that 125,000 workers be vaccinated by December 8th. That rule is linked to an executive order issued by Biden for federal contractors. The rules for another order covering private businesses with 100 or more employees are expected to be finalized soon. Along with the mandate for federal workers and contractors, Biden's vaccine requirements will affect about 100 million people. That is about two-thirds of the U.S. workforce. A series of layoffs has already moved through the health care industry. The industry acted faster than others to put vaccine mandates in place. Nurses and other health care workers who chose to leave their jobs rather than be vaccinated recently spoke to Reuters news agency. They said they were concerned over a lack of long-term data about the three vaccines currently available in the U.S. The vaccines received emergency use approval from the Food and Drug Administration in less than a year. Most medical experts have said they are safe. They have supported their statements by noting large vaccine trials and saying hundreds of millions have received injections worldwide. Some companies are taking steps to reassure workers that their requests for medical or religious exceptions will be given serious consideration. Southwest Airlines spoke to its employees last week. The company said it would permit the unvaccinated to continue working rather than being placed on unpaid leave. Southwest said that would be the case if the requests for exceptions have not been examined by the government's December 8th deadline. I'm Brian Lynn. Thank you, Brian. And that's our show for today. Some content in this program was provided by the Associated Press or Reuters News Agency. And don't forget to join us again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Ana Mateo.